Welcome back to PCM Yeti. It's episode 54, Tour of Norway. We continue on stage number two. We had a good first stage. We got a podium on that one, and we've got a shrinking peloton now. Four punchy and or medium mountain-ish stages uh, make up this race. And as we hit a little gravel sector here late on with 17K to go now, 16K to go. Uh, we've got one rider just up the road there, the and otherwise the uh, chase is on. This gravel sector is a lot longer than I expected it to be, and it's definitely taking its toll on the team. Speaking of taking its toll on the team, race day condition is taking its toll on the team. Now 12k to go. We're going to be lining up here pretty soon for the final run in as we come out of that gravel and set ourselves up. So, Gianni, uh, let's go ahead and gel now. Which way? will gel now. Wang is already done. I guess we can still gel anyway. Ten kilometers to the yeah, 68 line. riders. So the, the field is starting to thin uh, with the difficulty of the challenge. 9.5k, this is our time to go. For what I believe is now the ninth time out of ten opportunities, we have a negative race day condition as a team, out, and a team not by a small margin, and ooh, for and a second there we split the, the field. There's a real chance to hear uh, to split it further as we're chasing down these last couple of guys. Uh, anyway, what what we have today, the, by the way, the motivation's pretty low for the team right now. I'm not sure what the factor is on that. Could be that it's Norway and it's cold. Uh, and wet, miserable kind of conditions there, which would be affecting pretty much the whole field. Uh, but despite that, I expected it was a minus 6. We've got a minus 13. So once again, on top of that, uh, we have a pretty significant negative number uh, on that race day condition. And it's just been a regular, like, repeat kind of thing. Shui is nearly out of energy. Uh, let's get uh, Zipanati to take over and counter the attack of these three guys trying to go for it. Blackmore, Englehart, uh, Suter, those are the favorites, actually. 4.7, so gel up for those last two guys. And Zipanati push out front five. We've split the field off. 17 seconds ahead. 3K, like front really four. It's a shame, Abdullah, but not going any further. Holy two and a half K out. Getting an early sprint going to set up and keep the gap and set up G to attack off as we go into the final kilometer here. He is sprinting, right? No, they've regained contact with us, but can we stay ahead to the line? G certainly looks like he's got a stage win, and he does. Nice, Castrillo, Suter, second and third. Uh, there's Engelhardt just a little behind. Zipanati and Abdullah both in the top 11 for the stage. Great result for the team. There's a gap given after the 47th place rider, but that is the first gap, so nothing significant in the breakup of the field. But Derek G moves into the overall race lead as he took third on stage one and got the win on stage two. Zipanati and Abdullah still up there on the same time. 34 riders remain in that same time group before you see the big drop off. So uh, the contention group is definitely thinning out a bit and we're looking really good for a top finish overall with a couple stages to go. But being that it's just a two pro race, not a world tour race, we are not uh, doing any snowballing or anything like that, but this is really good for the points that we're after. Before getting into the next stage, team morale. So we're looking at the latest impact things. Uh, August 6th now. So August 5th, August 4th, we're getting G and Zipanati happy with the first couple of stages. And there you go. 3rd of August or 2nd of August, we just got a whole bunch of team members upset, sad, disappointed over the limited number of racing days that they've uh, had. But that still doesn't amount for everybody. Like Abdullah should have been fine. Zipanati should have been fine yesterday. G will definitely be fine now. But whatever the case may be, race day condition is now neutral heading into the next stage. Just getting underway on stage number three, but the update for this one is, well, for one thing, we lead the overall, so we've got to start protecting the overall. So Wang is at the front of the group, 
uh, not riding hard and actually trying to let that group get out a little bit. It's only a minute and a half. It's five riders, and there are other teams invested in contributing. They've just backed off the a little bit on how much flagging. effort the they're willing to put in. So as we let them uh, get out to that little bit more of a gap, we'll um, measure our effort so that it doesn't get too far out and hope that these guys behind actually contribute when we get kind of the right effort level, the right gap. Uh, but it's quickly out to uh, three minutes couple climbs on the way but it finishes with a climb on this one a climb that is six kilometers six percent very steep right at the beginning though you just you've got to be set up before that you got to handle that one and then push on from there definitely notice that there's a fight for the king of the mountains points in this breakaway today and so each time they reach the top of a mountain all of a sudden the gap goes out by about 40 seconds as they go into that full attack mode. This time, much less so, and we've we've now successfully managed to get the group under four minutes and kind of holding Wang, getting some recovery right now. Also helpful as he's done all of the work that team in support uh, have taken, well, similar to what we just saw. They came through on a descent for about 100 meters. Front group is also split. That's making it a lot easier to uh, manage, especially with just one rider doing the chasing. Looking pretty good on the day. We've got to make sure we catch that group as the that front group of about 30 riders. One of them is in the breakaway today. Uh, now I'm curious, as we're still 354 out, is he one of, yes, 19th overall, Weideberg. Weideberg is the, the guy. Not a strong rider, but a 74 flat rating means he can hang in there and stay away. And, We've got just one third of the uh, and this other team is now, now the stepping up watching. the pace, stepping up the chase. Good. We've got some support finally. Well, with three new chasers, all from the same team, gap is quickly down to 212. So they are definitely being reeled in and at this point are not looking much of a threat. Wang, he's wasted for us. Away. We're not going to have they him really for the final kilometers, the uh, but I do have you know five other guys. Uh, race day condition, first time, it's neutral. It's minus one, but it's neutral. So just the second time in the last dozen or so stages. As the gap comes down to a minute, and as we go through 25 kilometers left, setting up that final climb. There is fatigue in the legs. The chase has been hard enough. The riders are exposed enough for whatever reason. The pace is such that everybody's feeling it. Nobody's been dropped from the peloton yet, the but there's so the much fatigue away. in the legs. 20k to go now. Uh, G and Zipidati being protected. Going a little bit better off, but even they are a bit fatigued. It's going to change the climb a bit. It's, it's not going to be as hard of a climb. A second team now comes forward and picks up the mantle on that chase as we the go inside 30 to seconds to those chasing riders. 20 10%. seconds, 15 seconds. Last little bit of false flat is now done. We're going to be flat or even slightly descending until we hit the climb. And we're at just 13k left. Shui is done. Uh, Giotti is going to be the one taking over. So we're going to have just four guys for this and then Abdullah. Abdullah's going to end up losing time, but that's fine. Uh, pace is lifted a little bit. We've got a sprint point here. I don't think I really want to go for it, but that's also where things are going to suddenly get crazy. So, uh, Nobody's challenging the uh, sprint point. On to uh, Giotti. Back off a little bit. 9k to go. As there was no attack and lift, it's not a perfect time to catch the field out and create some sort of breakaway. 6k onto the base of the climb onto Abdullah we'll go with the 91 Zipanati and G they have a long ways to go just the two of them remember it's this first part that's the steepest so onto uh, Zipanati leading like G out we'll get past this steepest portion and then it's going to ease off the towards the finish away. so as much as it hurts Zipanati and G I'm really surprised that hasn't split the field though 82 riders still left. 4K. A lot easier from here for Zipanati to lead out G, though. 
two and a half K. Zipanati out of the red bar. We're gonna go 99. Use up what he's got left. Setting up G 1.9 K. This climb is feared by many riders. Staying in position. Staying in position. One and a half K. One K banner. We're gonna start coming out from behind the wheel. Moving up. Moving up. 600 meters. Now we attack. Oh, it's a little gravel at the end. We're seeing Castrillo get away. Martin's coming. Zekiel Martin. It's Cofidis. Plap is going to come past, but we are going to get third here. Uh, that might be a few extra seconds for Castrillo at the top. G gets third. It is Kiel Martin. Uh, Velasco, Igor Arrieta. Really good riders. That's a good result for G, especially on a minus one. Uh, race day condition. Zipanati still not over the line. Uh, we're coming up past the top 20. He's about a minute down by the time he comes in at 50th. Castrillo gets a gap, and after Bissot, we get a gap 18th on down. So that is going to thin the field a bit further. We pull another four second bonus for Derek G, though Castrillo pulls, what, 16 seconds on him? No, 12 seconds. 12 seconds over him, which is enough to take the lead. So Castrillo into the lead, but Derek G on a minus one race day condition uh, and definitely nowhere near the strongest rider in this field. Uh, he's got a 73 mountain. So for him to be just four seconds down in second with one stage left is looking really good for our... I think we're pretty much guaranteed a top two now, and maybe, maybe we can beat Castrillo for... Uh, Something more, 75s across the board, and I think he is one of the few riders on uh, Fitness Peak for this race. I think I saw him as the second rider listed in terms of quality on down on those who had uh, an objective for this ra race. Harrison Wood, Burkadao, Engelhart are your top five. Uh, we've slipped away from the standings, otherwise it's down to just 14 riders on that same time. Uh, but you've got groups close behind Zipanati down to 29th. Thought we only lost a little bit of time. It looks like there was more splits given as well. Abdullah also slipping well down. That's okay. A podium is worth a lot of points. The nice thing about being in second is I'm under no obligation to chase down the breakaway, even though it's only four riders and they're already down to 45 seconds with 40k still left to go. They're going to get caught soon enough. But it saves me a rider, saves me a couple riders, depending on the circumstances. They so, really uh, and Castrillo's so team is going to have to do the work. So that makes it a lot better, a lot better scenario for us that a few of his riders are already going to be gone. There are two sprint points right on the way towards the finish line, and I'm very tempted to buy them. But the finish is only uh, just shy of 2K. Very short climb. Not that steep either. So it's really a puncher's day. Really a puncher's day. Um, I, I doubt there's going to be That's much field the sprint the the uh, as they've no been chance. caught and we are the back to the, the peloton. Base. So with 28k to go, I should have the use of all my team. Abdullah, minus three, by the way. <laughs> Positive race day condition. The streak is broken. 12th time asking, maybe the 13th time asking. We finally have a positive net team race day condition. Not by much. It's a plus four. Ooh. Compared to what we were getting. Right, we've, we've had a minus three per rider in one of those stages, and we've had many, many occasions where it was a lot more than minus one. I'm tempted to go for the seconds here, but G is the only one who would benefit from them, and so we're, we're not going to bother, at least certainly not with the first one. Uh, those two guys have come back in, so they're not trying to attack. That's good. 17k to go, 7k until we hit that a second time. <clears throat> and we've got our full team. At our disposal. So as we get down to that last couple of K, we're going to push on and try to be aggressive from that sprint point on. So we're now at 3K towards it, and those guys are starting to come forward. Yeah, he's got a little lead out there. 2K. All right. 12K overall. I like it. Let's go. Here comes those couple of riders trying to attack. Meanwhile, Abdullah is still just trying to get in position. But there's little hill. A little bit of separation. We've split the field behind us. Those guys are likely to set up. The field behind us has regained that contact, though. Abdullah's already burnt that red bar. 9K to go. Bring him out front. There we go. 
8k to go. I think we can uh, move on to a wing, and now it's down to 33. So we have, for a second time, seen a split to the field. And riders are definitely not yet in position, and it's 6.8k, and you know, maybe just maybe we've caught somebody out. They're regaining that contact, but positioning. Field's going to be stretched. They're going to be all over the place. And Wang was somehow behind Giotti there. Not sure how he managed to do that. We lost some ground. 5k to go. Okay, gels for the rest of the team. Abdullah has recovered, but it's too late to bring him back forward. Okay, Wang is done. 3.5k to the back of the group. On to Giotti. 2.8k. Here we go. On to the climb. Soft sprinting for Giotti. We've got lots of riders to lead this thing out, and we're just going to push, 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 and then hope for the this the best of having, you know, depth within our attack. It's already inside It's already inside the 500 meters, so G, attacking. He's not going to get the win. Rondell is. Basau might overtake us for a second. So no, G's going to take second. Well it's not a win. But it's worth a lot of extra points. But not he's right behind him for uh, fourth place. Would be nice if he would have gotten some bonus seconds. There is some separation in the field. Certainly first to second. But is there separation from third to fourth? Probably. Uh, is there going to be separation anywhere else? Maybe. Either way, G gains six seconds. Castrillo was fifth. We were four seconds behind him. Unless Rondell has somehow snuck in and stolen the overall away, Derek G is going to win the overall. Oh, and there is a gap to Zipanati, 12 seconds. The gap to G is 7. Uh, the gap to Walker in 29th is 38 seconds. That's going to open the field up even more. And Derek G has won by 7 seconds over Castrillo. Awesome. Awesome. We got the overall win and a stage win and a couple more podiums along the way with this one. And let's see here. Or was it three podiums? Did G podium each stage? Only 12 riders left on that same time, which the same time ultimately ended up being 29 seconds down. I suppose there was little gaps here and there podium position wise, right? Before you had your first big group. 47 to that first chase group, 51. Uh, Zipanati ends up in 25th. He's only going to pick up a couple of points, but hey, the overall is worth a lot of points so we'll take that one that's that is a very solid result for us we're gonna take a quick check in on how the team is doing but also what's left of our calendar we'll take a look at the calendar portion first uh, also scouting wise nothing's turning up there uh, we've got a four star prospect some three and a half star prospects but nothing that's going to be in that four and a half to five star range which is what it's going to take to make the team right so next up is a world tour race level a bologna so we're going to be in poland uh big opportunity for some really big points there Hagland will be leading us out and Derek g uh, we also have the tour of denmark two pro three sprints one punchy stage and a time trial but our best time trialists are not there so it's going to be a sprint team largely so trying to go for those kind of few sprint stages uh, then we have another two pro in uh in Heinen. Uh, we have tour of britain which is also a two pro and the maryland cycling classic which is a one pro so all of those are going to be played all of those have good points opportunities uh, into the final stretch, Luxembourg, another two pro. Uh, we still have Cuba's national championships. Good opportunity to score points there. Uh, Lankawi, two pro. Liechtenstein and Taiwan national championships. We should do well with uh, both of those. Taihu Lake, another two pro. And you wrap up the season with the Japan uh, Cup race. So everything left on our calendar is pro or above meaning all going to be covered you got like one episode for taihu one episode for lankawa uh lankawi yeah probably it depends on what team i bring not the sprinters not the sprinters going to that one so yeah just a couple stages to kind of focus on luxembourg definitely a s episode by itself so we're looking at like three episodes there britain the punchers that's five stages to cover might bleed into a couple episodes 
Uh, we've got a few sprints here with the sprint team going to Hainan. That'll be quick, so I think that'll bleed over into two episodes combined, plus throw in that Maryland Cycling Classic. So, what, five episodes there towards the end of the season, and then these last two races, uh, which definitely GC focus on this first one, sprint focus on that second one. Uh, at least a couple episodes, maybe three to get through those. So seven to eight episodes to get to the end of the season. Uh, but lots of opportunities to score points. Very good opportunities to score points over these last two months of the calendar. The index is going to be one of those things that's really important to keep an eye on, though, as we do this process. Because as a team pushes into World Tour or a team gets bumped out of World Tour, it's going to change who we're really going head-to-head -head with. Looking at the Continental Pro rankings right now does not mean that's the teams that we are facing off with. It depends on who's going to be World Tour and who is going to be Continental Pro for next season for that ranking to uh, decide whether we get those automatics. Right now we are 19th and there is no reason to think that we're going to get any higher than that because the signings are literally just starting. We're a few days into riders getting signed. Right now it's just the biggest names, which is going to the biggest teams. It's not changing anything for us in our position. We're in the same position we, w we were, but we're definitely going to drop down as those signings in our range happen. Right now Sam Rook is the only one who looks like they could be going up. Alpes and Dukenic look like they could be going down as well as Astana and Arkea could be going up. But it's way too early for that to matter. Let's look at the rankings. Astana is 10th and they definitely are vulnerable. Arkea could be going to World Tour. They're first in the Continental rankings right now. We are second at this point. We have passed up Intermarché and we have left behind Sam Rook and Kaha Ruel, who we were competing with just a couple months ago. So we've definitely made some good progress. The second team that was vulnerable was Alpes and Dukenic. They are behind us in the standings. It wouldn't be such a bad thing then if you were to lose Astana and Arkea moves up, right? Because that would still be a one-for-one one trade off, and we would still be second. Like I said, that's all going to change drastically over the next few weeks, and then that's going to be where we're really starting to pay attention to uh, where we're at with things. But I think we can really score a lot of points over the remainder of the season. Not doubling what we have. We have more points than we had all of last season. Uh, in fact, we... I think we're getting close to having as many points as we've scored in this series like total uh i i think if we can get in the 7000 plus range though by the end of the season 7500 i think we're going to be looking pretty dang good for at least a second place finish in the continental pro rankings g leading the way i uh, just picked up let's see what was it you know norway's not even showing up on his list which means those points have not been added in yet. So his overall win uh, has not been tallied just yet. Yeah, Zipinati would be a, a safer case to look at. Yeah, no points for Nor Norway. So we have not had those points tabulated in yet, which means uh, we're going to be looking even better. We, we could be closer to about 56, 5700 right now. Yeah, 200 points for finishing first overall at the Tour of Norway provisional we had the lead for at least one stage so 205 classification on a stage we've had a stage win and multiple podiums is going to add up to at least 50 points or more uh, so we're yeah we're, we're looking at better than 250 uh, we were 25th otherwise so maybe another 260 270 in terms of points from the tour of norway is going to do it for this episode though i'm decathlon gamer like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.